Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. The Cold War era revealed a fascinating side of Soviet aviation as they launched many fighter jets that were enough to give a hard time to the US Air Force. However, there was a top secret project that never saw the light of the day that was the DSB-LK Dark Star. It was destined to be like something out of a science fiction movie. With its sleek lines, delta wings, and menacingly long nose cone, there was nothing to wonder why they called it the Dark Star. But why did this incredible machine remain just a dream? Why did the Soviets never build their Dark Star? Join us as we reveal the cutting-edge technology that was supposed to make it fly, and the challenges that stood in its way, and decide a dark fate for this Cold War phantom. In the late 1950s, Soviets started working on a new project of creating a military aircraft that could outpace the US most feared SR-71 Blackbird that was unbeatable due to its hypersonic speeds. The Soviets named this new proposed aircraft the DSB-LK Bomber. It was envisioned as a formidable force that was capable of delivering swift and devastating strikes against Western cities, or even dismantling a US carrier group before detection. Before we get into the structure and capabilities of this aircraft, let's get into the reason why the Soviets wanted it so bad. Well, the era of late 1950s and 1960s is marked as a thrilling period in Cold War aviation, where engineers on both sides of the Iron Curtain were highly ambitious to develop cutting-edge weapons that are capable of delivering nuclear payloads across vast distances. However, there was a significant challenge in getting these ambitious bomber projects completed that was the need to outpace interceptors. In a perpetual game of one-upmanship, both the West and the East sought to create faster bombers and the corresponding interceptors that could counter them. You know that the United States transformed its SR-71 into the YF-12 to create an interceptor that was called the fastest of its kind. Even though there was nothing that could match its speed in the air, the Soviet developments were trying to get one step ahead with the DSB-LK bomber project that seemed to stand out due to its unconventional origins. The strange point about this aircraft was that unlike other Soviet initiatives led by major aerospace firms like MiG or Sukhoi, this project was initiated by the Leningrad Military Aviation Engineer Academy under the leadership of Alexander Maskaliev. Maskaliev was a remarkable figure in aerospace engineering and had designed his first aircraft at the young age of 26 and a flying prototype by 29. This showcased his extraordinary talent and ingenuity. By his 40s, he had established himself as a prominent aerospace engineer and got on a bold new venture that was creating a supersonic seaplane bomber. Some of his early designs for this project were strikingly unconventional and were a hint at the audacious nature of his vision. A variety of shapes were considered for the new aircraft, ranging from a duck-like design to a tailless configuration. However, it was the flying wing that captured the designer's imagination. Keeping in mind the escalating competition between the Soviet and American aerospace industries, he envisioned a solution to the ongoing arms race. So the concept of the DSB-LK, or Long Range Strategic Bomber Flying Wing, was born, although it emerged at an unfortunate moment in history. The DSB-LK aimed to redefine aerial warfare with its emphasis on speed. Maskalyov set ambitious goals, targeting speeds ranging from Mach 2 to an unprecedented Mach 4. Notably, this was a time when the SR-71 Blackbird had not yet been developed. Even if it had, the YF-12 fighter variant might have struggled to counter the DSB-LK's advanced capabilities. Maskalyov's foresight extended beyond supersonic limits, as he explored combined ramjet and afterburning turbojet propulsion systems to achieve hypersonic speeds exceeding Mach 4. Operating at altitudes exceeding 100,000 feet, the DSB-LK promised unparalleled range that was estimated at around 16,000 kilometers. This meant it could potentially strike targets anywhere globally, depending on its launch location within the USSR. The aircraft's design featured a blended fuselage and wing to optimize aerodynamics for minimizing the drag and maximizing payload capacity for combat operations. This colossal aircraft was planned to be constructed with titanium. This metal was the perfect choice for handling extreme speeds. With a total of six engines, arranged in pairs of three and two gondolas, this beast was ready to conquer the skies. Unlike the SR-71, which had to resort to shell companies for titanium procurement, the USSR was the primary producer of this crucial material. So, it was readily available for their ambitious project. The DSB-LK was 50 meters in length with a wingspan of 37 meters. To put that into perspective, it dwarfs both the B-2, the largest flying wing aircraft, and the Tu-160, the world's largest bomber. 
On the inside, there were compartments for two pilots and one to two weapon officers or navigators to fulfill the crucial roles in this aerial colossus. This aircraft was planned to carry an impressive 15 to 20 tons of armaments. When we compare that to the B-2's 18 to 23 tons, it seems a feat to behold. The payload options were equally impressive, ranging from nuclear warheads to the massive FUB 5000 bombs. But here's where it gets really interesting. Remember those Hay-45 hypersonic missiles developed for the T-4 Satka? Well, they were likely candidates for adoption by the DSB-LK. Moreover, with the capability to carry nuclear-tipped Hay-45s, it could potentially wipe out an entire U.S. carrier group in one fell swoop. When considering its defensive capabilities, one cannot overlook the presence of numerous small turrets strategically placed across its surface. These remote-controlled turrets, with two positioned on the top and two on the bottom, were each equipped with 1,200 rounds. Moreover, the aircraft could be armed with air-to-air -air missiles, providing an extra layer of protection against potential threats. No doubt, it's no exaggeration to say that this aircraft was designed with security in mind and was able to go so far as to be considered overkill. There were even discussions about creating electronic warfare and reconnaissance versions of the number one of that time, the SR-71. It was capable of matching the speed of its own missiles, and this aircraft could swiftly descend from high altitudes and operate nearly undetected. All of this was achieved before the Lockheed Skunk Works team had even conceived of the SR-71 Blackbird. However, despite its remarkable capabilities, DSB-LK aircraft never saw the light of day. The late 1950s marked the beginning of the space race. During this time, the Soviet Union gained a significant advantage with the development of the R-7 Semyorka. It was a crucial step in their ambition to reach space. This advancement spelled the end for many prospective supersonic bomber projects across the USSR. After six months of its planning, the project was shut down completely. The reason for cancellation of the DSB-LK project was a big change in how countries were planning to fight wars. Now they were focused towards using rockets that could go super far and hit targets anywhere in the world, rather than using the fast bombers and fighters. These rockets were way better at hitting targets than the fighter jets. So the focus drastically changed from planes to rockets. Even though the project was stopped, it was still ahead of its time. It had lots of new ideas, but it was also a bit old-fashioned because the fashion of how wars were being fought was changing. Moreover, they couldn't get enough money to keep going, so the project remained just a plan. However, the things the Soviets learned from this project were still useful. They helped make other remarkable planes to keep the enemies alert, so the project's ideas didn't go to waste. Though it could not make its ways to the skies. But if the DSB-LK project had become a reality, it might have changed how people thought about fighter jets. It could have been a really big deal in the Soviet Union, and they could have got a chance to show off their skills in making advanced aircrafts. Maybe it would have been a symbol of their power and technology, just like the US's famous stealth bomber. But with the shift to using rockets for long-range strikes, the DSB-LK, if created, might have struggled to find a clear role. It might have been used for shorter missions or as a testbed for new technologies, rather than critical combat missions. Either way, its impact would have been limited compared to what was originally hoped. Or was it just a hype? Let us know in the comments below. What's more interesting in this story is that the design of the US X-47B plane looks a lot like the DSBLK project. They both have a similar shape with big wings, even though they're from different countries. This shows how ideas in aviation can travel around the world and change the way the planes are made. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to subscribe to the channel, like the video, and watch the next video as well. See you again.